You know, much of what I'm going to share with you is actually what I heard from my mother and, and my grandmother. Uh, not much from others. So what they told me was that uh, around about 1890s, the effects of about, uh, you know, Tamil Nadu had about five famines in the 19th century. And especially the non-farming castes like the goldsmiths were doing not at all well at all. Simply because uh, when people don't grow enough rice and other things, you find the economy is very bad and they don't really spend much money on making gold ornaments. My great-grandfather was looking around outside uh, Tanjavur district where he can go and make a living so that uh, his family can survive. He was not alone. There were many, many other Tamils who were moving out of the Tanjavur district in search of jobs elsewhere. And many of them would have come to definitely uh, Burma, for instance, and then uh, Singapore, which was already famous then. My great-grandfather's name was Subramanya Patar. Of course, here Patar simply means he's definitely a goldsmith. So what happened was that my grandfather's name also, uh, according to the family tradition, became Subramanya Patar. And when I was born in Singapore, I was also named Subramaniam. So my mother, out of respect uh, for her own father, who was having a shop in Angor Street in Singapore, uh, decided that uh, I should never be called Subramaniam at home. So she just used to call me just money. So that's how our family tradition started. So my great-grandfather, Mr. Subramaniya Patar, decided that uh, he must look east, meaning look east to Southeast Asia, to make his family fortunes much better. Because uh, there was a demand in the state settlements for uh, very talented goldsmiths who can open the eyes of goddesses. Because there was a lot of temple building happening in Singapore. And a friend wrote to him that they needed an expert uh, who is good in opening the eyes of goddesses. You know, after the temple is con uh, before the temple is consecrated, the eyes of the gods and goddesses must be opened. And that cannot be done by a sculptor. It can be only done by a goldsmith who is an expert in that tradition. So here, opening the eyes means the last painting of the eyes, which give actually life to the statue and in fact, uh, even to the devotees, they feel that the statue has become alive because of its, the brightness of its eyes. So he took, his, took a ship from Nagapattinam. I really don't know what was the ship's name. This was in 1896. He left, of course he left his, uh, his family behind. He came alone. And then uh, he realized after coming here that actually in Singapore, things were very good. So when he returned, I think he must have come again here with his, this time with his uh, uh, son and probably grandson. And it was his grandson later who came and uh, established a shop in Angor Street, the, the first goldsmith shop. Those days, goldsmith shop meant you just don't work alone because they come from a tradition of uh, what we call as Natan Mekarar. That means under them, they will employ about 20 to 30 youngsters uh, that is novice goldsmiths who are roughly between the ages of 10 and about say 13. Uh, they, will, they will come here and then they will sh sit in the shop and make small portions of the ornament that you see finally. Uh, so if you see a chain, uh, this young uh, novice will be making a small uh, portion of it. I hail from a family of crafts people. And these crafts, uh, despite the uh, economic up and ups and downs of Singapore, have survived. And one of them is the goldsmith industry, which has now diversified. You may not find traditional goldsmiths practicing anymore uh, the, their tra tra traditions, uh, because nowadays machines have come to make a large number of jewelries. And besides uh, uh, goldsmiths themselves who migrated to Singapore, all the children have gone into education and various professions. I'm called a Tamil in Singapore, even though sometimes I don't understand why I'm being called a Tamil, because I really uh, have imbibed a lot of other values in me. What is my identity? It's an identity of fusion. Probably Tamil language and some of the Tamil traditions are at the core. But I think uh, I'm infused with a lot of complex ideas and complex behavior patterns. 
And I think uh, the definition of Tamil can be now extended to anybody who doesn't even speak Tamil, if they can imbibe some of these traditions. Right now, we are commemorating 200 years of Singapore. And we are looking into the future and reflecting what is it that our ancestors brought with them that made us as well as this place. One key thing is their adaptability. They adapted to the Singapore environment. And the next core values they carried with them was they care for their family, their community, and finally, those who made it successful in their life here, philanthropy. I think these are the key things that we can take from them and carry forward.